thanks everyone for coming. Uh, we really appreciate the great turnout for the meeting. Um, we very much appreciate your, your participation. Uh, as usual, uh, these meetings are recorded. We post them on YouTube uh, so other people can, can see them if they're not here. Uh, if that's a concern to anyone, uh, please let me know. Um, So uh, our agenda is uh, we're going to do talk about we're going to do introductions for anybody who's new to the meeting, uh, talk about board farm, uh, funding OpenWRT projects, regulatory update, and OpenWRT summit, and then any other discussion. Um, Ron, I, I don't know if you've been to these meetings before. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is my uh, first meeting. Um, awesome. From uh, can can you hear me? By the way. Yep. Yeah, um, I'm from uh, uh, Zitavolt. I heard in the recording that you introduced us uh, last week. Yep. Um, so I'm the um, security uh, architect for for our uh, company, and I choose uh, OpenWRT as a platform for for us. Um, and yeah, we would like to see OpenWRT taking a, becoming a, a more uh, commercial uh, and more uh, more <clears throat> introduced by by more more vendors so we we plan to we wish to to build a product on top of that awesome that's great um since we're a little late do we do we still want to do introductions for everyone or do we want to just keep going on and we'll just uh we'll just keep going on then um, but thank you, Ron. Um, a lot of great people here from a bunch of different companies. So we and uh, some people from no companies. So it's great. Um, board farm status. Uh, my uh, modifications are uh, for the work that I'm doing for Purple are, are right there on the screen. Uh, the big thing this week is the pull request. I did finally have a pull request for the non-root. Uh, test users so that theoretically someone can log in and run um, run tests on a LAN or WAN device without actually getting uh, root access to everything. There are some things they're still going to have to have access to, like you know, being able to modify the firewall, which is pretty significant, but they don't have the ability to do, like, you know, delete the kernel or some something absurd like that. Can um, I ask? Yep. Um, so did you just like create a, a guest account on all your machines? Yeah, it, 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 it's a little bit, there's a guest account, but it's a little complex because they still, you still have to give them access to some things. Um, so I sent the pull request and it kind of goes into, goes into that. And I'm not sure if it is, uh, if it's clear, um, but you do create a guest account. Um, you have to give them uh, access to run sudo on a couple commands without their, and we're doing it without password, but it doesn't really matter. They could type in their password just as well. Um, and also changing uh, the um, chain mode for uh, a couple uh, commands. Um, I can go into more detail on there, but it, it's a, it's relatively, um, it's a pretty large change. It, does, it shouldn't affect anybody who's not who's running as root, but uh, um, I'm encouraging people to give comments and to give suggestions because it obviously is, uh, it's a big, a big push. Um, cool. uh, I'll have to check it out. Please do. Yeah, Matt, uh, Matt McClintock's already commented and, and gave me some, some feedback and I'm going to incorporate that once I get some more from everyone. So I don't, you know, have to keep making little changes that, um, go back and do that but awesome yeah uh i think next steps for us is uh is i'm going to get a, a build server set up uh so we can run we'll just run start running daily tests with this db120 um and probably uh i think the next thing is to get a web page to kind of just show off you know what's being run on each device at each time um, and then we can, as we expand, we can start to figure out a way, like how do we give out um, access to people who want to run particular types of tests or run their own uh, um, modifications. And this is also part of, as Paul said, you know, as we expand, not just doing obviously Qualcomm devices, we have the um, 
the device from uh, Baikal as well as uh, we're going to obviously want to do the the CI forty as well. So, do, so I think do you have a, a build server for uh, building OpenWRT stuff. No, I haven't. I haven't got oh, one. Okay. So, yeah. okay. I'm going to. I, I think I'm just going to use uh, my initial plan is to just get a uh, uh, a server on like Linode or something because we don't because we're only building like one right now just one a day so it's not like we're going to need something heavy duty um and it gives us ability to kind of expand and once we right. once we get something once we're doing like like we're doing like you know 50 a day or something yeah then we'll get something hard that we will have yeah in -house. i'm trying to think like maybe on a quad core machine it, it takes less than an hour i think to build yeah i i I've actually run it on my system, and I did it with one processor. I had it set to one processor, and I could get the build done to 10 minutes. Oh, um, right. So <laughs> it was, I think it's manageable, but we'll, but we'll see. Does that, I mean, does that include downloading all the things? <laughs> oh, no. No, it takes longer than that to download everything. Okay, yeah. Most yeah, that's the, the main thing. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time is downloading in that case. Um, but with everything already downloaded, yeah, it, it takes longer or it, it only takes about 10 minutes to build. So I think those are next steps. Uh, my Ansible work needs still needs some more cleanup, but it um, it also is, uh, for managing all of these pieces, I think it's gonna be useful to other people who wanna do something similar. And I'm also going to do a blog post once I get that uh, Ansible a little bit clean uh, cleaner. Um, I wanna do a blog post to kind of just talk about, you know, how do you actually do this? Um, because uh, we don't, uh, have that kind of like step by step. How do you actually, you know, you've got all the pieces. How do you actually do it? Because um, it it's not always clear to people. So that's it for me. I mean, other people who are using Board Farm, do you have any updates or any sort of um, um, any sort of things you want to share? Nothing. To report, really, this week we spent like uh, two or three hours on a call earlier today trying to get the four farm installation working on our Puna setup, which is where we're going to have it in the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some issues with networking. So I think I mentioned last week that uh, the big push that we're trying to do is is well, we've got a lot of, we want to be building um, our CI40 stuff on every pull request, sort of save the developers some time in reviews. Mm -hmm. um, so that's our focus now. And then once that's there, we're getting the artifacts over to and, and on, on a board ready for board farm to test would be the next step. We're just setting it up. So awesome. Uh, yeah, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a bit longer. I'm not sure. OK, well, if there's anything we can do to help, um, yeah, I'm certainly happy to help. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and I should also mention Paul sent uh, emailed me um, Kind of their setup for testing uh, uh, Wi-Fi, which uh, which is it's really um, it's nice to actually get it in in hand, and we should and I think we're going to post that to the wiki or a blog post. Um, yeah, I'd uh, be interested to see. Do they use like um, just off the shelf USB adapters for Wi-Fi, or are they doing something else? So the the key here is that. Um, really, it's for the intention is that we're trying to replicate um, signal loss, right, without having to move physically away from two. two okay, so you do you use wires and then they uh, exactly, okay. exactly, yeah. So yeah, definitely, it's 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 uh, it, it's it, Paul had a a very very nice diagrams to kind of just let you see how it exactly works, and so that'll be helpful, I think, to people as well. Does it include like a little metal Faraday cage box? <laughs> That's one of the hardest things to do. We do have like proper RF chambers here. And yeah. obviously it's expensive to get hold of anything. Yeah, I was looking, those prices are pretty high. Yeah, yeah. It, we did try like getting a cheap, uh, making our own DIY cheap version, but I mean, it was reasonably effective with five gigs, just not 2.4. You just couldn't stop it. <laughs> you stop it coming out, man. It's everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, at at some point with with board farm with with uh, the purple board farm, we would like to be able to to do Wi-Fi testing. But this is going to be that challenge of how do we actually? 
I mean, if we can get it down so that, you know, the, the even, I, I don't know how far this is going, the, the stuff that's leaking out. Um, it, yeah, I did say I would test it out for you. I think the issue I've got is that at the office, it's quite noisy anyway, so I'm not sure uh, how relevant that is. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, when you say Wi-Fi testing, I guess it depends what you want to test, right? Do you just want to make sure that um, you know, the Wi-Fi is reliable or are you expecting some... Uh, it depends on the tests. So I mean that this sort of setup is useful if you want to try and eliminate the danger of other noise affecting test cases, mm -hmm. or if you want to simulate things moving away from each other and how they react to that. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do with Wi-Fi, of course. Yeah, definitely. I, I think. Uh, I, oh, I was going to say if you if you were just doing functional testing, then you can do it cheap. But as soon as you want to do like performance you know, throughput, stuff like that, then you get like expensive boxes and wires and attenuators and that's when it gets hard. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I mean, I, I think the aim for me giving you this stuff, Eric, was mostly about, well, for RCI 40, we've only got one ethernet port. Um, mm -hmm. So we wanted a kind of situation where we'd have um, the LAN side is just on the wireless and the mm -hmm. WAN side is ethernet. And then I think you raised the point of, well, um, we don't want this, you know, broadcasting to all the other buildings around so yeah. can we reduce the broadcast range i think this will i just don't as i say i don't have figures and i guess mm -hmm. it depends a bit on how well your board performs <laughs> yeah i suppose that's true all right um well i mean that, that gives me a sense yeah my, my goal is really to so we can do this so that we're not if someone runs a test that we're not broadcasting all over the all over the town and we're not broadcasting outside of the preferably not outside of the room we're in um mm -hmm. so uh but yeah that's that I, this is going to be a difficult problem i think so but again that's that's kind of down the road i think once we but it's it's good either way i really appreciate the the work you're doing and it's very helpful and it's going to be useful to people i think no matter what no worries thank you very much that's great uh, anybody else have any thoughts on board farm stuff? I can mention one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we Someone within Qualcomm said that they were interested in helping um, sort of work on the, the, the upstream board farm, the one on GitHub. Yeah. And they want to uh, reduce the changes to the ones that we have, we run an internal version so that we can do our work all upstream. Yep. Um, and it'll, so that's good. So that's hopefully awesome. he'll help out soon. That's <laughs> that's awesome. Make it better. <laughs> that's great. Um, oh, that that actually reminds me. Matt had had suggested um, a change of trying to put the test into a separate repo. Um, I think that's probably actually a good idea um, because it would then there's going to be a lot of people who have tests that are very um, that are very unique to their use case and it makes no sense to upstream them and then they can pull in other changes uh, that aren't related to tests and uh, and it reduces the uh, the divergence. I, I think that's a good idea. I, I started um, an issue and uh, just and, and I think that'd be great to get people's comments on what are the things that we can split off into separate repos? Um, because once we know that, we can get a sense of, you know, do we have a, uh, I mean, to be fair, this is kind of what um, OpenWRT does in a way, in, in that they keep a bunch of stuff in separate repos and they have tools for, you know, getting the latest or, you know, staying where you're at or, or whatever. So um, I think it'd be really interesting to see what people what people think yeah, about yeah i definitely think that's a good idea um i just I, I never spend time on thinking on how to split up the tests from the rest of the framework but that'll definitely help a lot if someone figures that out no absolutely i completely agree um and then obviously people can have their own private one that they that they use and set up and everything so actually uh <clears throat> from my experience uh tests are pretty simple because uh you usually don't run into conflicts with uh, with tests. So basically, I have uh, my repo with uh, that is basically cloned from uh, GitHub, and I have locally committed tests. I have different test suite, 
but uh, I can regularly merge because there's there are no conflicts. One thing that would be trickier is uh, board setup, because yes. yeah. then people will run into conflict if they are experimenting like me with board that I'm not really yet uh, confident enough to push upstream. Mm -hmm. That might be something to think about. But in general, I'm. I'm not seeing that much problem with uh, tests uh, being part of the repo, but uh, I agree that they don't belong there. Yeah. No, I, I think devices is, is also actually another area that that we could we could look into splitting out. Um, we had this discussion, I think, in December when I was just just very early on and and trying to split things out, and and we didn't really have. Um, it was more of an idea and one of the things that was considered was devices and it was kind of well let's wait until we till we really get into this and see how people are using it and so i think devices is another one of those areas that we could say okay maybe some of that stuff should be in a, in separate repos um which allows people a little more flexibility in how they use it and uh minimizes the difficulties with uh with, with merging and upstreaming stuff and you know, anything we can do to make it easier for people to use uh, for their own custom use, but also to make it easier for them to uh, upstream stuff and not have merge problems is, is going to be valuable, I think, to the project. I just wanted to mention that uh, personally, I don't have a problem with merging, but it might, uh, run, uh, some people might run into it. So, yeah. yeah. Just Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I please. I mean, everybody should. Um, there. I, I don't. I wish I had the issue on screen. It, it's in the the QCA board farm issues. I think it's probably one of the one of the first ones that the latest ones. But I would encourage people to to comment on that and share their their thoughts on how we do that. If we do end up going that direction. Uh, funding open WRT uh, projects. Uh, Art, would you like to talk about this? Sure, thanks, Eric. Mm -hmm. um, we've received a very nice proposal uh, from uh, Luca Perkoff regarding the CWMP project that I mentioned a week or two ago. So they've, uh, they've done a very thorough write-up of the project proposal, what the benefits would be, why it, why it would be good for both community and industry. And we will review that with the uh, Technical Steering Committee uh, in the next week or so. And also, uh, we'll go into some Q and A with uh, Eric and Kathy uh, from the Open WRT or Purple WRT side. And we've invited uh, Luca to make a presentation to the community as to what the benefits of the project would be. So, a very nice uh, proposal. This is the first formal uh, idea that we've received, and I certainly hope others will contribute their ideas so we can. Uh, prioritize them, trade them off, see what has the most uh, community and industry support. Uh, Absolutely. And I, th I think that's about it so far. Awesome. Yeah, I can, I can, I'll, I'll second what Art has said that it, it's a, the, the proposal from Luca, it, it's very, very in depth and, and a really solid proposal. So it's exciting. Um, it, it's good because I, there was some, some early, uh, some conflict when we got started, but I, I think the the we got the discussion started, and it's good to see that there are people that are, are very interested in this and in uh, in uh, you know meeting everybody's needs. That that this isn't uh, just industry or just uh, just community. It, it's uh, it's it's broad. So I would absolutely encourage anybody else to please uh, email myself, email Art, email Kathy with ideas you have, proposals, um, and we can kind of. Uh, look into uh, and uh, and we can we can come up with some really good stuff. Uh, regulatory update. Uh, I don't have a ton with that. Uh, the big thing uh, that had come up this week is uh, there was an article in IEEE magazine uh, from a uh, 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 engineer uh, who's been involved in IEEE for a while discussing the topic of, of the Wi-Fi lockdown. Um, 
I think he he had it seemed like a really well meaning article. I'm not really. I think there was some some uh, misunderstandings and it, it didn't quite uh, it missed some some key points. Um, so I'm going to be talking with him uh, personally and uh, and discuss like um, I, kind of the how I've seen it go and how some other members of the community have seen it go and and kind of get them up to speed on some of the, our concerns. But um, that's about the main activity there. Uh, Open WRT Summit. That this is probably one of the uh, big things that has happened in the last week. Uh, we've kind of set up the members of the planning committee, and I—that's uh, the list right there that I copied in from a Google Doc. Um, those are the people who have volunteered. We're we're welcome to people from other other people volunteering. Um, it's I don't think that this is a situation where we need to have a limit because I, I you know. It's good to get viewpoints. Uh, if you're interested in volunteering for the planning committee, you would be in, involved in helping us kind of set the date, set uh, set kind of the budget in a, in a general sense, uh, set uh, where we're going to do it, as well as helping us select uh, the uh, proposals uh, and also, uh, you know, help us uh, work on the, propo the proposal um, requests. So it you're very much would be very much involved in uh, making sure that the uh, the open next open WRT summit is uh, as strong as possible. Um, I'm going to be emailing all all the members uh, probably today to try to find a time for our first meeting. I think we're going to meet probably about uh, every other week. I think is probably a good idea, to, and we're going to just kind of start going through some of these questions and getting them solved and and discuss. Decide, deciding as a community when we should when we should have the summit where it should be um things like that so and then the kind of general ideas we assume it will be in fall uh but obviously that's up to the committee if they decide that that's not practical i, I don't see why that would happen but um so uh, a good good set of people and it, it should be a good time uh, any other thoughts on the summit that anyone wants to wants to discuss or uh... all right uh, any other topics uh, anything wants anyone wants to discuss about uh, purple WRT open WRT anything that's relevant All right. Well, uh, I think that's it. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining then. Um, it, it's always great to get a great turnout, um, and I'm excited to work with everyone. Uh, please uh, keep, uh, you know, please comment on the mailing list and please uh, and get involved in Board Farm and all these other topics. And uh, I look forward to meeting you all again uh, next week. Cesar? Yep. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, babe. Thanks, babe.